Hi, welcome back to Flywheel Films. There's a lot you can do with the exterior of a car as far as aesthetic mods go, but the interior of the car is what you notice most as the driver, especially what's right in front of your face. That's where Rev Limiter comes in. I started looking into their gauges months ago. They have so many great options no matter what you're looking for. Modern, vintage, clean, simple, racing, even custom options, and you can customize existing faces to whatever you want. I chose the redline gauges because they really complement the crystal white exterior of the car, bringing some contrast into the fairly monochromatic interior. So the stock gauge phase isn't bad, but once you start comparing it to the options RevLimiter has, it starts looking boring and even off-putting. I mean, RevLimiter has doge gauge faces. So I meant to show you the unboxing, but I threw away the box. But this is what was in it. Lots of random stuff, which is always fun. They threw in a mask because, you know, gauge instructions, they've included gloves. Lots of stickers, including the coveted Yacht Club. Their business cards, which are actually gauge faces. How cool is that? And a Hot Wheels car, not a Miata, a 2016 Honda Civic Type R. Still pretty cool. And finally, the gauges themselves. Hopefully, I haven't opened it yet. Well, they sent me the right ones. And a signed thank you card. That is a Miata. And what's in here? Yep, gloves. And what is this? So this is also on their website. I highly recommend pulling their website up just so you have the step-by-step -step instructions, which I'll be using for the actual tearing apart of the dash. They look awesome, like even better in person. I'm thrilled. So now that we got these, let's go take apart the car. Welcome to the garage, welcome to the car. Big shout out to Colored in Light for his video on the gauge removal and installation. Uh, if you're like me and like watching as many videos as you can before you do something yourself, go check his out. I also have the rev limiter gauge install instructions on my iPad here. So those are nifty, very clear, easy photo step-by-step -step instructions. So let's give it a go. First step is to remove the gauge hood, which theoretically you just pull up on. Yep. Aha. Got it. So if you have one of the grand touring options or special edition with the Bluetooth package, that will have a factory microphone right here on the hood. Just FYI, there's an extra clip that Red Limiter didn't mention. All right, there's a screw up here. Take out the lower part. Blow the steering wheel. Three screws underneath the steering wheel. If you want to hit two birds with one stone, do your wiper stock at the same time as this. I did not plan ahead accordingly, so I will not be doing that. Alright, so now you can get to the two screws on the bottom of the cluster. So the gauge cluster has three screws. One on the top, very obvious right there. The other two are on the bottom, kind of behind this like rubber mat thing. Um, you literally can't see them, you just kind of feel for them, but they are sticking straight up. These should come out now. And there are two clips down here. Uh, 
sure that works, I guess. I think I broke it. So, gauges are out, ready for the inside part. All right, got it. Wasn't too bad, just sweat, like a half bucket of sweat. I have the instructions pulled up on their website and we're gonna keep chugging through them. Okay, so four screws on the back. All right. Take out the rubber mat that goes below it. You can tell which way this goes back because one's a circle, one's a slot. They recommend putting gloves on now. The biggest reason for wearing the gloves is so you don't get oils on the inside of the plastic or glass, whatever is on the gauge faces, or the gauge faces themselves. It is possible to clean them. They said these generation three faces are a little easier to clean and they they can oils can be removed, but that is still more work than you want to have to do. Okay, now there are a bunch of little tabs around the entire interface, which I will use a small flathead to very carefully pry apart. You may be able to use your fingers on some of them. Just slightly bend them out of place. They keep trying to get back in there. All right, you don't need to take the tabs out of this. You don't want to take the circuit board out. Just remove this from the back. I'm gonna keep it flipped over so no dust settles on the inside. So this is the hardest part of the whole install, the removal of the needles. So what you'll do is you'll very carefully, and it emphasizes very carefully, rotate until it goes past the lower stopping point and you just continually slowly rotate. They say you may have to rotate lots of times. And you want to make sure you grab it by the middle not the needle itself. You want to make sure you're pulling the needle off of the motor shaft and not the motor shaft out of the stepper motor. If that happens, you have a lot more work cut out for you. Nailed it. One down. Four to go. carefully read the instructions do not eat oh man it's getting hungry <laughs> so carefully reinstall the needles now there is a small tick mark for each of the small needles so you line that up carefully To calibrate it, and you slowly press it in. If you do end up damaging one of the stepper motors, um, Rev Limiter does have a guide on how to repair it on their website as well. And if you mess up a needle, unscrew it, try again. don't feel like you have to push it down too far like you don't want the needles to rub up against the gauge face so I've put the three small needles in 
Um, however, I realized they are clear needles on a white surface, so not super easy to see what's going on. I decided to color the small needles black with permanent marker, and I'm gonna do the bigger needles red on the top with permanent marker. So uh, I'll do that, and then we should be able to see them pretty easily on top of these white faces. Here they are. So let's pop these on and see how they look. So as you can see for the needles you don't actually have to thread them or twist them to get them back on. You just push them down once they're lined up. The tack and speedometer are lined up with the zeros and the small three needles are lined up with little markers just to the, well, I guess, left or just below their lower point. product. Now we'll just put it back in the car. Back in the car, time to reinstall, retrace our steps. So I couldn't be happier. It's amazing what the little things do for your interior. I mean, look at the stock interior compared to the current one. Gauge faces, head unit, shift knob, the little things add up nicely. And as you can see, it's really not a hard modification to do yourself. Just be patient and be precise. I think I broke it. So what should I do next in the interior design department? I'm all ears, so drop a comment, drop a like, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.